Assemblymember Bata was elected in uh, 2012. He represents the 18th Assembly District, which includes a large portion of Oakland, Alameda, San Leandro. Um, Mr. Bata chairs the Committee on Pensions and Retirement in the State Assembly, and he led the effort to repeal fees for part-time, uh, for part-day preschool programs this year in California. He's a he himself is a father of, of three children, one of who is, uh, whom is uh, still in that transition period. And he is what I'm hoping will be a new group of champions for early care who will persist over time and help us lead the effort to finally um, accomplish universal preschool and early care in California. Assemblymember Bonta. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Great to see you. We got a great crowd here today. I just want to first thank Supervisor Chan for her tremendous leadership in this area and many areas and for her uh, personal mentorship of me. Um, it's been exciting for me to be able to, to watch your leadership, Supervisor Chan, and, and um, I've modeled much of what I've tried to do after what you've already done. So thank you for everything that you've done uh, for the state and for the county. Um, also want to just take the opportunity to thank the Alameda County Early Care and Education Planning Council, including Angie Garling, Ellen Dektar, and Kim Hazard for their coordination with my office and being here today. I also want to thank Janice Berger and First Five Alameda County. Thank you for your leadership and partnership and the Interagency Children's Policy Council. Uh, really excited to be here for today's School Readiness Forum. Um, before I say anything further, I want to uh, just thank and acknowledge my wife, Mia Lisa who's in the back, who, as many of you know, runs an early childhood education program um, called Literacy Lab that's based here in Oakland and was formerly with Bring Me a Book. So we're sort of in this uh, early childhood education movement together. And, um, you know, you all, you all are here because you're committed to this issue and, and because you're believers and you've read the data and you know how important it is to have high quality early childhood education opportunities for, for every young person in California and every young person in, in, in the country. And for me, this issue is fundamentally steeped in our, our, our commitment to justice and opportunity and equity. We've all seen the data about the 30 million word gap and the disparate outcomes for children who grow up in low income neighborhoods versus those that grow up in middle and, and higher income neighborhoods. And we're all here because we know that that's not okay. Because we need to do something more and better for our children. And so, I come at this from a, a couple of different capacities. One, certainly as a state legislator who has input on policy for the state of California. And I'll talk a bit in a moment about what we've been doing in the state, and Supervisor Chan has already touched on that. We've made some progress. We're moving in the right direction. That's good, that's important. That's worth acknowledging and worth celebrating. But we. I, I totally, 110% agree with Supervisor Chan, we haven't done enough. There's much more to do. So we have an opportunity to seize the moment and do more going forward. And I have personal experience with early childhood education. My uh, parents put me and my brother and my sister in early childhood education programs um, that helped us get ready for kindergarten. My wife and I are raising three children of our own. We have uh, Reina, who's now 15, and Ileana, nine, and Andres, she's in fourth grade, and Andres is a kindergartner, just transitioning into kindergarten. They all went to the same preschool, um, started when they were two, and a uh, preschool that we really had faith in and trusted, and um, it, it helped get them all kindergarten ready. So those personal experiences inform the policies that I've tried to champion and will continue to work on. You know, unfortunately, many of you who, who have had the opportunity to spend time with, with the governor or, or hear him speak about this issue doesn't quite see it the same way. He, he, has, a, he has a different personal experience, one in which he says that um, he didn't have early childhood education programs or uh, child care, and he ended up being the governor of the state of California. So um, uh, that's anecdotal, um, maybe not the best uh, evidence-based um, policy decision, but um, so we got to work on him. We got to work on him. And, and, and what I'll say is this, um, early childhood education and opportunities for our, our children zero to five is a, is a top priority for the Assembly Democrats, which I'm proud to be one of them. And 
It's also a priority for the Senate. They, they see it a little bit different in terms of how to get there, but they share that priority. The, the, the governor, for, to me, from what I've observed, it's not a priority. And so if we're going to make progress statewide, short of doing a, a proposition where voters can vote directly and, and implement a, a new policy around universal uh, preschool, we need to help convince the governor and, and his office. And you know, to me, it's a little bit difficult to understand why he's not convinced. He's, 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 a, he's, he's very intellectual. He's very thoughtful. He's very smart. He's well-read. He's well, very experienced. And the data's there. I don't, I don't see how you can argue with the data. But, but it's going to take our coalition um, coming together, pushing harder, um, as Supervisor Chan said, being impatient and, and, and trying to make it happen as, as soon as we can. And you know, sometimes we just got to raise the volume on, on this issue. And for, for, for legislators who are pushing from the inside, it's always incredibly helpful to have advocates on the outside working in lockstep, you know, coming to, to the legislature, packing policy committee hearings, speaking on the steps and holding rallies, getting into the governor's office, doing the email campaigns and the, the letter campaigns and the phone calls. Uh, telling their legislators across the state that this is important. So, you know, it, it's a movement. And it starts with our leaders on the inside working together with our advocates on the outside to make the change that we want to see. And we can do it, and we will do it. Um, but it, but it's, 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 a, it's a battle that we need to embrace and, and, and be ready for. Um, want to just share a little bit more about sort of my own uh, experiences with early childhood education. So I was, I was talking about my kids, which someone's gonna have to stop me at some point because I'll talk about them all day. Um, and um, they all went to the same, same preschool. And um, now they're going to, my, my two little ones are going to the elementary school around the corner of our public school in, in Alameda. And um, Raina, my oldest, is now a sophomore. And um, this is gonna, forgive me for this, this is a proud dad moment, and I'm, I'm gonna just, just talk about Raina for a second. So Raina was our firstborn, and um, just recently she committed to attending Yale, and will be playing um, on the women's soccer team there uh, in, a, in a couple years. And we're really excited about that, and I think that uh, her early childhood education had a, had a, had a real um, impact on her ability to, to go to the best colleges and um, the best universities for, for her. And so, you know, we need to provide that same opportunity for every child to, to get off on the right foot, to have that early start, to have an equal playing field by the time they get to, to age five in, in kindergarten. Because for some, um, it's never too late, but, but they're way behind by the time they, they, they hit the kindergarten at age five. And it's hard to make up that ground. You know, the, the achievement gap that we all talk about solving, you can't start trying to solve it in kindergarten. It starts way before. And so th there's been some, some, in, some exciting uh, successes that I just want to touch on. Um, with respect to what we're doing in, in the state at the state level, and you know, we've really focused on restoring some of the past cuts. I mean, all of you know, because you're so close to this, that there were some really dark days for early childhood education in the state, where we were cutting uh, slots up and down the state, and we're, we're making our way back, trying to restore them. And through this through the state budget, we invested 273 million dollars in early education and development in in three key areas: access quality and uh, rate restoration. And so, uh, Supervisor Chan, uh, thank you for mentioning this. I was really excited to, to work on a bill called AB 1902, which repealed family fees for part day preschool. And, and, and let me just take a moment to talk about that, because I have these advisory committees that are, are filled with, with experts and community leaders in different subject matter areas, education, boys and men of color, public safety, faith-based advisory committee, and I really rely on those committees to help inform me and, and work in partnership on issues that are important to the community, to, the, to the, the wonderful 18th Assembly District, which includes Oakland, Alameda, and San Leandro. And out of one of these meetings came the idea to repeal the fee for Part Day Preschool. It was, a, it was an idea that started at the grassroots level and uh, that we took on as a piece of legislation and uh, moved it through the legislative process, got out to the governor's desk. Um, and, um, and, and it, it was signed. It was signed actually through the, through the budget. It got incorporated early um, in, in, into the big budget bill. So to me, I, I want to say one thing about that. That shows that grassroots, 
local, um, community-based advocacy can make a real difference for the communities and people that we care about statewide. You can take an idea that is that is formulated and forged at a at a at a, at a local meeting and turn it into a statewide policy in the biggest state in the country, and and so. That's a success. That's something to be happy about. That's something to be proud of. That's something to build on. Because we have, we have bigger um, challenges ahead of us still, and we need to address each of them. And other successes, we, we restored 7,500 full day, full year slots in California state preschool programs. It also, the budget also provides for 4,000 additional slots by next summer. We restored 1,500 slots for a general uh, child care program and alternative payment spaces of $17 million invested there, and then $10 million for, for child care facilities. On, on the quality side, um, there's a $50 million ongoing grant to support quality improvements for California State Preschool programs, and there's also $25 million invested for professional development for TK and state preschool teachers. And then finally, I mentioned rates was the third area where we made progress. Um, we increased um, the standard reimbursement rate by 5%, and that'll help support providers throughout the state. So again, progress. Sometimes you hit the home run, you hit the grand slam in, in, in one fell swoop. Sometimes you gotta hit a number of base hits and make progress every year and build on it and make incremental change. And so last year was a year of progress and a year to build on. A Couple other things that uh, many of you are close to this, but just wanna, wanna share and update you. Outgoing uh, Senate Pro Tem, Daryl Steinberg, authored the, the Universal TK bill last year to provide transitional kindergarten for every four-year-old in the state of California. I was proud to be an early co-author of that bill. Um, that bill did not succeed this year, but it also, I think, really elevated the conversation and debate and dialogue around the need for stronger early childhood education programs. At the end, that, that was one proposal, uh, one approach to strengthening our early childhood education programs and the legislature and the governor together went in a different direction uh, in those three areas that I mentioned. And, and you know, one good thing about where we are today is we're in a much more healthy place financially as a state. So in, in the Great Recession, we were cutting programs because of our, our, our financial situation. Now we're restoring programs, and we can now for the first time think about things like, like universal transitional kindergarten for every four-year-old. Or, or universal preschool. Not inexpensive, uh, but very prudent and wise investments in my view. And something that we should, we should be spending money on early um, and that will pay strong fiscal dividends in the future, but also um, you know, these, are, these are the right moral investments to be making. We also had a bill last year that I was co-author of it called AB 1444, which would have made kindergarten mandatory and uh, got to the governor's desk. The governor decided to veto that bill. He said it was better for parents to determine what is most appropriate for their children and families. I think he got that one wrong, but um, he's the governor and I'm not, so he, he got to make that decision. Um, and uh, these, are, these are, again, these are bills that, that move the conversation forward, that were important um, to push forward, that it, we, that it was exciting to see get to the governor's desk, and sort of back to my original point, we need to work a little bit more on the governor and see how we can get him to uh, see the world the way we do and, and, and get him to sign some of these bills. Big picture, you know, we have President Obama talking about the call for universal preschool. Um, that's exciting. I think it's that's elevated the dialogue throughout this country and uh, helped our work here in this state and, and, and in Alameda County. Um, and we've also been doing some of our own things. Uh, you know, if, 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 if the state can't do or won't do everything in, in, at one time, we can also move forward here locally with local initiatives because, because of our, the strength of our coalition, because of our commitment to early childhood education. And we did so with Talking is Teaching, the Talk, Read, Read, Sing campaign that many of you were involved with, um, that, that the Hillary and Bill and Chelsea Clinton Foundation and Next Generation and the Coalition of Early Childhood Education advocates throughout this uh, area committed to, and we rolled that out right here in Oakland which was very exciting. We had um, the, the, the Secretary of State, um, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton here at, at Children's Hospital to talk about that initiative and, and help launch it. So we, get, we have a lot of momentum. We have um, a lot of work to do. I'm excited that I have been reelected to another term in office to help continue my work with all of you um, and to continue to strengthen the coalition. We are in a period right now where the 
the legislative session, the two year legislation, the legislative session that we just finished is, is completely over. The governor has either signed or vetoed all bills that were on his desk, and we're gonna ramp up and, and go back to the legislative session in January. And this is the time in my office where we are actively soliciting ideas for new legislation, for, for, for new bills that can help move forward the issues and priorities that we care about most. And I've had some conversations with many of, of you in this room already about potential bills and ideas, talking about support for the zero to three population and home visits, quality measures, a number of different areas, um, more tools for parents. And I'm, I'm, I would like to invite as many new ideas and thoughts that you have as possible. Again, I think the model of community-based grassroots ideas from experts in the field works and is best and will serve our community um, in, in, in the best way. So I want to invite those, those ideas from all of you. And again, I want to touch on a point of, of strong agreement that I have with, with Supervisor Chan. The impact of poverty on Californians and on our children. With, with one in five children living in poverty, that's over two million of our kids that live in poverty. And, and we have not done enough to serve them well and give them the opportunities that they need. And early childhood education is a place where we have much more to do and an area that can have a, a super um, high impact on, on outcomes. So I just want to thank you all for your commitment to California's children, to our most vulnerable populations. We all know that we must invest in every single child in California, regardless of their income, regardless of their race, regardless of their immigration status. There are kids, and if we don't fight for them, they're not going to get what they deserve. So I just want to appreciate all of you for, for your commitment to our children, to early childhood education. I appreciate your partnership. I look forward to making more progress in the future with all of you. Thank you.